on our drive north, we decided to pop out at a beach called Praia Rosa. And in Portuguese, Praia, that means beach. So this is Rosa Beach. I've had it marked on the map because it's marked as a good place to see the whales when they come in. But as we drove through, it is very tight, full of hostels, full of little hotels, not much parking. So we won't be able to stay long. But I think we're gonna park right here for a few minutes if we're not in anybody's way. Maybe make us a lunch, keep an eye out for maybe some whales. But driving through here, windy roads through some hills, definitely getting more of a tropical feel with the landscaping. And it reminded me a lot of Tulum with all the funky little souvenir shops, bars, and cafes. It's a pretty beach. I think I'm starting to learn that Brazil is full of pretty beaches. So Kurt whipped up a yummy, sweet, chili, pineapple, chicken stir fry. It was so good you guys didn't get to see a picture of it. But we ate it right here with this amazing ocean front, front view. Now we've walked about a block down the road and we found a little cafe. This morning we ran out of coffee so we didn't have our morning coffee. So before we get back on the road and drive somewhere else, we're gonna have a little cafe. This place is nice. I just walked down there and look, you can see in opening up the hill, there's just beautiful houses all along there, overlooking the coast. There's a little lake right there. Yeah. It looks like fresh water. It's, it's nice back in here. It's a pretty town. Well, we've had our coffee and Praia Rosa is delivering as a beautiful beach. But unfortunately, I don't think we're gonna be able to find anywhere to park to camp here. There are a lot of signs. Does not seem like it is a camping friendly beach, which is fine, we totally respect that. We have one more place to look and see if they'll allow us to park there. But if not, we'll head, have to head north five or six miles to Brazil's next beautiful beach. What is amazing is that these beaches have these hills that roll right out into the water that are covered with greenery, starting to get more and more tropical as we go north. And we're learning that there's trails in all of these little mountain hill areas. So we gotta find one, maybe one I can do, but for sure one that Kurt can do. But I am about to head back up to our van which is right up there. Kurt's flying the drone to give y'all a bird's eye view of this beautiful beach. But it is time to climb the stairs. Let's go. But up around these hills, there's trails. There's trails that wrap around. On the north side, there's another little mount up there. And uh, it's just a really beautiful place to hike around and walk around and to enjoy the nature. And then you just kind of get a, stick your head out along various spots in the coast and see all these big boulders. And there's even actually quite a few birds. I haven't gotten out the big camera, but the point is guys, this place is absolutely stunning and a place that we could easily spend three or four days if the parking accommodations were right. So look at this little shanty upside the mountain here. And it's just a very humble house with barely a roof, but a hammock in the front. And this is your view. And there's a couple more buildings along here. And from the last beach we saw, a lot of those are kind of like boat houses. Uh, they'll have boats and other uh, nautical gear stored in there. But this is where it would be nice to be able to park, but it looks like it's only a turnaround. So we've definitely reached the end, I think, of the walkable area. It looks like there's a gate down there and that that might be private property. I see cows grazing up above. 
And then there's that guy with that shack up there. He's probably the guard to it all. And this right here, I wanted to see if maybe we could park here, but it's a roundabout. And although I can't read that sign, I have a feeling we can't park here. As they say, all good things must come to an end. And as I said earlier, we gotta find some parking. So we're headed out of here. Snow has spotted a few places, wild camping, up the road a bit. Kurt says all good things must come to an end. But I'm learning that here in Brazil, I don't know if the good beaches are gonna come to an end for quite a while. I think we're just getting started. <laughs> I do too. <laughs> All right, we have made it to another town. This is Garapaba, and probably pronouncing that wrong, but man, I gotta tell you, these little beach towns along here are really pretty. They have lots of nice little shops and markets. I mean, really, it's eye candy driving through this city. I can see how when it is season, people are down here in these apartments and hostels, and this place hopping. is hopping. Of course, it's a rainy day, so not too many places are hopping, but everything does appear to be open. And we are getting pretty close to our camp spot, so hopefully when the weather clears, it's a place we can show you. It looks like this is a potential wild spot. So here we are looking out for no parking signs. We do not see any, and most of these, ba these houses here look shuttered up like they're seasonal, so, so nobody's here. One of them's even for sale. So that means we won't be blocking anybody's view. We won't be bothering anybody. This looks like a good spot, guys. I think we can even get fairly level. Good morning, everyone. I found the public boat ramp and it's a little narrow slot. And as you can see, the beach line right here, these houses, residences, and businesses are backed up literally right to the coastline. I don't think it's an extremely high tide, uh, but in any event, look at how beautiful this is. Now there's all sorts of seabirds here, and I'm also guessing from the number of people here that they are waiting for some of these fishing boats to come in and uh, maybe buy some seafood. There's a couple guys up here that look like they're set up to do some cleaning. But this is down here, sort of at the city park, the city center, if you will. And up on the hill, we've seen the church off on the distance. But what a beautiful little beach, oceanfront, kind of fishing city. I don't think it's the heart of fishing season, as we've kind of learned here. Nonetheless, it's got a lot of character, this little town. All right, while I was out, I had to get one of these pastels. So they're big, squared, like fried empanadas. Nothing about these things is healthy, so leave that there. But it's rainy, we might get old, and I had to go for a little walk. I walked down this little boardwalk and saw that place. We just got some new Brazilian coffee. Snow's got that fired up, so we're gonna have a little afternoon treat and uh, hunker down for this weather, which is probably about here. And just to give you guys some perspective on where we're staying, so this is the little Malacan, the little street front, and we're parked right up over here behind this little green restaurant. So a really ideal location, just a short walk to the little downtown area. So these are pastels, and they are yummy. We discovered these in, how do you say that town, Snow? The one that starts with an I. <laughs> Seems to be a Brazilian beach thing. They're like empanadas in the crust, the light fluffy ones that we like. They're square and inside they're sweet stuff. Now the other day we had a chocolate banana one complete accident that I ordered it. It's not what I meant to order, but it's what showed up and it was good. This one is just chocolate. So Kurt said, I'm bringing a snack, get the coffee going. 
coffee will be ready in about one minute and we are gonna eat this thing. We got a new pack of coffee, so it's always interesting. Snow is telling me today that she is getting her coffee palette dialed yeah, in. I can tell when we don't get a good thing of coffee from the store, because sometimes we just have to get, and I don't want to sound like a coffee snob because we were never coffee people, but I'm starting to tell the difference between cheap coffee and medium priced coffee. Now we never buy the expensive coffee, it's not our gig, but I've learned I don't like the cheap coffee. Does that make me a coffee snob? I don't know. Well, it's been two days since we talked to you guys last and it is dreary and rainy and it has been for several days. The weather reports were right, but we found a nice campsite with a nice view right here, a hundred feet from the crashing waves. What do we do when it rains and rains and rains and rains? What do we do, Kurt? We edit when it rains, don't we? We do. And sometimes we play Scrabble on our phone. Or words. You play words with your mom and your sister, don't you? And G hangs out in the fort underneath my feet. Who's winning the words competition? Me. You're beating your mom and your sister? It's a very competitive family, I will tell you all that. But this is just a look inside of our life when it rains for three days straight. We, uh, we edit, we watch TV on our computers, we snuggle with our kitties, and I think we've been cooped up for so long, we're gonna put on our raincoats and walk a couple of blocks down the road in the rain for lunch before we go mad in here. But that's the update. When it rains, we just chill. We are suited up in our rain gear. There's the van right behind me. To get over to the little restaurant area, we have to walk down onto the beach, maybe 200 feet right over there. So I'm gonna put the camera away so I don't bust my butt on these stairs. We will not let this rainy day <laughs> defeat us. We have encountered a river crossing. <laughs> But we're going for it. <laughs> All right, my turn. Let me put the camera away. All right, I made it. Toes are a little damp, but not too bad. Look at this rain. It is coming down, guys. We got a little shelter here of a bar that's only open during high season. So we're taking advantage of it. Kurt has scoped out how far we gotta go. What do we got, a football field? We made it to dry shelter. We are at a restaurant that looks like it's gonna be good. What do you see up there? So they have a bunch of vegetarian buffet, so it's not traditional Brazilian, but it looks like really super good. Mm -hmm. So is that you what you're getting? Check it out. You can get that or you can get that with an entree. Okay, all right. I couldn't even figure out how, what it was, but it looks delicious. I know. I got a little bit of everything because I had to. But it's all vegetarian. Alright, we're diving in, y'all. Diving in. This, there's no meat on this plate, but it could be the best meal I've had in six Ever. Months. <laughs> it's so good. It's so freaking flavorful. Every bite. This is pretty cool. This is a net puller. In Florida, they pull the nets in over the back of the boat. But here, this is a motor, and so it turns the turbine, and they'll pull the net in right over here, right over here, and around the corner. And you can see this will just help them pull the net in right there, so it comes right in through here. And then they fill that up with net and fish. Yeah. Huh. And look what they do, Snow. I think they flip this down. Yeah, I think so too. And there's a boat full of the net that they pull in. Good 
Good morning, everyone. Woo! That wind was a blasting last night, and it's been raining for a couple days. But this morning we woke up to beautiful, to beautiful day. Getting G a walk early this morning. He's been cooped up all day yesterday. And even though it's rained, we've kind of walked around and tried some of the restaurants. I've gotten out and strolled some of the neighborhoods and the breaks between the rain. So that's been really nice. But there's a lot of beaches along this Brazilian coast and we've been cooped up. So we're looking forward to getting on down the road. We are leaving our three day rainstorm camp, which worked out perfect. Garapova. <laughs> and we are headed right down the road to, to the next beach to another beach yes Garapoa to Gamboa that's what we're doing we're gonna see what it looks like there I think we'll pass some sand dunes along the way we're not sure we don't know we're kind of just hopping along the coast and seeing what we find all the locals say as we head a little bit more north the beaches get prettier and prettier I still just don't know how that's possible but we're gonna go check it out we have made it to Gamboa Looks like they had a little damage from all the crazy rain that's been going on. It also looks like there's a little trail up there. Kurt's gonna take a short walk. I am gonna stick close here in case I need to move our van for this car to leave. We don't wanna block anybody in. But who is complaining about this view? Look at how pretty this is. So we came down into this little beach town right here and it is a little beach town. And really, if you look down the coast, there's not much access to the beach. We finally found the one road you can come down, but there are a lot of signs and a lot of whale tails around here. And so this is a little viewpoint I'm walking up on, a great spot to see the whales. We've been looking, but we sure ain't been seeing. So there's definitely a nice looking, there's a nice high lookout tower here. I don't know if it's for looking for whales or watching the waves for surfers. I do get the impression this is also a very popular surfing beach, but it also looks like this trail kind of wraps around here. So let's go check this out a little further. So I walked halfway up this trail to the whale watching platform. But it looks like Kurt probably continued on the more rustic trail. And he's out there somewhere exploring and I'm sure he's taking y'all with him. I love these rocky coasts of Brazil mixed in with the beautiful soft white sand beaches. This coastline is just amazing. All right, so I followed this trail around, around for a little bit, kind of came to a dead end. It's really a muddy mess. I guess from all the rain that we've had recently, the water's just kind of trickling right out of the mountain, doing a little tiptoe dance there on the rocks. But yet another beautiful spot could easily spend the day sitting here watching for whales. But I think we'll get back to the van. Maybe head north. I think we have a camp spot in mind on another beach just up the way. Coming back, Snow made it up here to the lookout. And go catch up with her and probably get out of here. We're slowly working our way north to a destination that is famous here in Brazil and, and probably internationally. It is Florinopolis, an island just off the coast that you can get to by a bridge so we can drive there. A big island, uh, north, central, south, a lot of area to cover. Everyone tells us we need to go there and I think that's what we're seeing out there in the distance. We are getting close. We've got one more beach stop we want to make before we get there. And then we're headed to Florinopolis. And I have spotted 
our Curdy Kurt out there on the trail making his way back. Curdy! <laughs> we are learning quickly Take the next left that when we hop off the main center, road right and drive to these little coastal towns, the Google lady has no idea what she's talking about. This is not the first time she's gotten us in a bit of a bind. <laughs> and we're trying to get ourselves out. Okay, this is the way we came in, so at least we know we can make it. Yeah, you got room. Yeah. You got plenty of room if you need to come this way some. <laughs> Thank you, Google lady. Let's get out of here. See if we can get to where we can at least see the beach in this little town. So we circled this town a few times in the van. Finally figured out we will not be able to get our van over to where we can drive along the beach. It's just too small of a little quaint beach town. So we found some bar parking a couple of streets over. And we're going to walk down and have some lunch try to get y'all out to the beach. It looks like a really unique beach area. We just got to figure out how to get you guys there. So the name of this little town is Guarda do Embau. E-M-B-A-U. So this is a swank little beach community down here. Definitely got a little surfer hippie vibe. But the thing is, it's kind of a river ri running right in front of it. And so if you can see out there, there's a big sandy barrier island. I'm not sure if there's water taxis down there at the end of the road where we had to turn around and go across, or you swim across. There's probably water taxis. A little beach right here, but definitely the ocean front, a white sandy beach over there. Now I can tell you, it's really kind of hard to get a feel for the vibe of this place because there's no one here. It's clearly the off season. And uh, so anyway, I do think there's a couple restaurants open, so we'll probably grab a bite to eat. Yeah. So we ate lunch at this little restaurant behind us. Quite honestly, the only one open in town. Almost everything here is closed because it is winter and it is a smaller town. Some of the larger beach towns have more stuff open. But what we learned from the waiter, well, it wasn't our waiter. It was a guy that works in there that actually speaks a bit of English, so he was helping us quite a bit. What we've learned is this is a international surfing destination. Right on the other side of this little river, on the, the dune on the other side, there are three different wave breaks. And two of them he called barrels. So I'm thinking maybe a small pipeline of some sort. So he said this is an amazing surfing place and he loves living here because of that. But we can't see that from here because we can't get over there. We could probably find a boat to take us over, but we'd have to track one down because they're not out and about and looking for people because it's winter. But neat little town nonetheless. And if you're a surfer, it sounds like you need to put this, <laughs> dogs everywhere. You need to put this on your list. Oh, dogs everywhere, guys. <laughs> Guardo de Mual, something like that. That's where we were, that's the beach, little hippie beach. We had a little chicken parmesan, it was tasty. A little walk on the beach, a little stroll through the town. Would love, love, love to see this place when there's a little more activity and some of the stores are open. Cool little place, but we're headed north. Let's go to another beach in Brazil. So I kind of been telling you about how all nice all these homes are and these these places are But it's been rainy, so I really haven't been able to show you a lot of video And G are out for a walk and I are out for a walk in this neighborhood So I'm gonna kind of show you some of these houses now one of the strange thing is that probably about 70 or 80 percent of these are totally unoccupied totally empty so I don't know if they're like Airbnbs, probably more likely seasonal homes, but they're very nice to have seasonal homes and not to have maybe them rented out or something like that. So I'm not sure exactly what it is. I'm sure if you're from Brazil, somebody knows, but we'll uh, have a look at some of these houses. And I should add that here we do see a lot of solar. 
on a lot of houses and structures. And additionally, uh, down through this region that we've been in along the beaches, almost every single house has a fence around the outside. And actually that's quite common in all of Latin America. A lot of times the first thing that goes in is the boundary walls. This might be the first time, at least that I can remember, where I was on a fully lit beach. And if you can see the beach all the way down there, there's big bright lights. And I'm actually, look, you can see the halo of this light right here. But all the way down the beach, all the way around, this beach is lit up. It's actually pretty cool. Nighttime beach, just walk out here and check out these waves. Sky looks pretty tonight. Sleeping on the beach, guys, we have a nice view. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell so you guys know when we put out new videos. And don't forget, you can always follow us over on Instagram to see what's going on in between videos. Cheers, guys.